We ready? Okay, part three. Here we go. Now, we have got a functional domain. Okay, all things. We don't see any um, exclamation marks, so there's no critical issues that are facing us. We want to look at our domain. I'm going to go to the administrative tools area. And we're going to go to Active Directory Users and Computers. They'll call this ADUC. Um, you're going to find an awful lot of acronyms in IT. Don't let them um, befuddle you. Just look at the ADSS, ADMW. You know, they're not going to call you that. Um, <laughs> uh, AD, uh, yeah, ADAC. These things, they're going to give them acronyms. Don't, you know, don't let that bother you. Uh, play through. So we're going to go through Active Directory Users and Computers. And there is my domain, Black Star Liner, right? And so I can expand this and you build organizational units, okay? And so these are some built in containers. These are all containers, they're called CNs. And when a computer registers, and I'm gonna show you that when we add a computer to the domain, a computer will register itself based on the MAC address and some other um, specifics, and it will be populated in here. In addition, users by default, these are your default users, okay? And see that uh, as we expand this, these are the user groups that are built in, okay? But what we're going to do is uh, we're going to build a new organizational unit in the Black Star Liner domain. I can do so by clicking here and right clicking. And we can go new organizational unit. Okay, and so this organizational unit will be the finance team. Okay. And there's finance. That's an OU. And I can make this a mail-enabled OU so that everybody that's added to that, you could send an email to an individual. Uh, oh, well, I can't do that yet. I need to build my Active Directory. Um, but I'm um, sorry. No, I can't make that a mail-enabled OU. I can make that a security group or a distribution list. So that way, the members of that finance group can all be reached by sending a single email to a group. I'm going to build another organizational unit. OU, right? And we're going to call that human resources. Okay, and we'll get another one in there. New organizational unit, and we'll call this And this is what we're doing here is we are building an organization from scratch, right? These are the various um, departments or practice groups that you're going to have in an organization. Right? And we're going to add those. And then when we go into those OUs, I can add a new user to that OU. And what I'm doing is I'm giving them the ability to log in to the domain. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in okay. And we're going to make her log in ddowner at blackstarliner.com. Okay, and she's in the finance group. So I'll go next, and we'll create a password. Um, black star. I don't know if it'll take this, actually. Black star liner, because it's the name of the domain. And then we can determine that the user must change their password at the logon, because we don't want their password. Okay. If you were building this for a service, were it for a SQL or something like that, you would select password never expires. Okay. And that way, that password, um, the service will always be able to access its account. Okay. So let's see if it'll take that Black Star Liner. It's the same name as the domain. It probably shouldn't. Yeah, it did. It shouldn't. Um, as from Just from a basic security standpoint, it absolutely shouldn't take that. Um, okay. And so that user... Ah, there we go. Good. 
Okay, there we go. That's exactly what I was saying. It should not take the no the the domain name as a password. Um, so we will give it. Let's see, the problem is I'm going to forget this password. I'll write it down. Uh, we'll give it a password of you know her dog or whatever. Um, what do we uh, create a password here? Server. I'll call it server pass it may need a uh, capital so i'll go server pass server pass okay and we will see if it'll take that nope doesn't meet the complexity requirement so i've got to put in some special characters okay so for the ease i'm going to use three s a uh, capital s three r v three R pass capital S three okay so we've got special characters we've got capitalizations we've got numbers and that satisfies the complexity requirements okay now we can go in and again create all of the users that we need to but what I'm gonna do first is before we do that I'm gonna come on over to my other server and I'm going to add it to the domain. Okay. I'm going to go to this PC. Actually, I could do so. I can do so right here. Uh, I'm sorry, here. Local server. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to the domain. The reason that I'm going to add this server to the domain is because it's going to be my mail server. I'm going to install Exchange on this server. Okay? And so we're going to have our Active Directory over on the other. Our DNS will be maintained by the other. And our mail server will be here. We'll add some printers and we'll add some different objects to our directory. And uh, you will see how control takes place on a network. Okay. I took the liberty of ma naming this mail server train because I knew that's what I was going to use it for. Okay, And so now it's in a work group. I'm going to click on that. And we're going to go ahead and add it to a domain. I'm still going to need to configure the... Um, I'm still going to need to configure DNS. So we'll do that uh, in a later session as well. Um, so I'm going to select the domain and I'm going to tell it what domain. Now, I think if I do more, it'll do a search and it'll look for any mail servers. No. So I'm just going to do blackstarliner.com. We know that's the name of my domain. Yep, it's going to truncate that in the name of the mail server. Uh, I could not be contacted. Oh, you know why? I'll tell you why. Um... It's our IP. Yeah, I need to, in the VMware, I need to allow for natting. That's right. Uh, the computers can't talk to each other currently. So uh, this is great because you'll learn a little bit more about the VMware as well. I think that's exactly what my problem is here is that. The two computers can't talk to each other currently. So what you've got to do is you've got to go up to your virtual network editor in VMware. And currently, what we're going to do is we're going to select our VN, uh, VMNet 8, which is NAT to NAT. And that is what my... Um, oops. That is what my server address, let's just validate that. It's going to 192.168.153.0. Let me validate that very quickly. Um, the command prompt isn't easy to get to here, is it? Oh, you know what else is? Uh, bear in mind, my computer is going so very slowly because I have a number of... Um, virtual machines running as I type it's going so very slowly and that's basically because I have so many machines running currently
Yeah, it's so the thing to remember in a virtual capacity is you are always sharing resources. You're sharing your memory. You're sharing your processor. So it's not like, yeah, so I've got a bunch of virtual machines going here. Here is a Linux install. This is Mint 7. Uh, something loaded incorrectly. So this is Mint 7. This is Linux. We've got a uh, Windows 8 machine here, which is currently running. So there's your Windows 8 interface. Okay. We've got a Windows 7 machine running. And eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of these machines joined to a domain so that you can see how each and every one of them does so and the differences when it uh, when that happens as it relates to log on rights and those kinds of things. We're going to take your soup to nuts, the whole the whole nine. But the only reason that I came in here really was to see the IP address of this server. And I'm fairly confident that the reason that I couldn't add that to the domain was because they can't see each other currently. They're on different subnets. So I need to merge them so that um, I need to NAT in the VMware so that they can speak together. An IP address. So if my other computer is on a 192.168.154.2, it can't talk to the 153 subnet. That's a completely different subnet. Okay, so it can't communicate there. So we've got a 192.168.153.146. So when I look back in my virtual editor, 153.0, so that's in the same subnet, subnet. Okay, and we should NAT, in our NAT settings, 153.2. So we should add, uh, let me just see what that was again. Ugh. Note how much you need to remember. That's a 192.168.153.146. Okay. So I'm going to add, uh, we're going to go to that NAT, and we're going to add a new server. Okay, uh, what port are we going to use? I need to know the virtual machine port. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of a um, little bit of research to figure out exactly how to make these communicate correctly on the network as if they were one, as if this was one individual domain. I will get that done, and what I will do is before I go further beyond this point, I'll come back and I'll start the recording, and I will actually demonstrate exactly what you need to do in order to map the ports, and you can have that domain in a virtual capacity. Okay, so we're going to stop this, and you're going to look at the, uh, and I will get you part four happening as soon as possible. All right.